Hallelujah. Okay, making sure I can drive here. And then we will start talking here. Um, in regards to the new birth experience that we who have truly passed from death into life did um, experience also experience um, a whole new way of doing things at the end at, oh, throughout the rest of your life because you are new you're new um, the Bible describes several different packages of fruit that will occur um, when this happens it describes to you um, what it looks like when you really um, have it passed from death so you haven't had a new birth experience and it shows you how you're going to act um, and it also shows you uh, with the new birth this is how you're going to act as well and he mentions things that are going to follow but there's things there's going to be evidences that are following those who are truly Christian and evidences of those that are not really Christian okay um <clears throat> So still, the, the stress is still focused on the new birth, okay? They call it regeneration, justification, passing from death to life, being born again, coming to the straight gate, um, turning your life 180, and all these different kind of things where you really just change your mind from living from self to Jesus, okay? And when you really have done that, you really have gotten forgiven for your sins, that's, a, that's, that's, that's pretty much the main deal of it. Like, you, you realize that you have broke the law and you're busted and that we want to be forgiven so we get forgiven and he gives us a new nature in the forgiveness process okay the whole the whole process not only are we forgiven in the sin but we got we pass from death to life we have a new nature we are a new creature in christ jesus and we now don't live for ourselves okay now you cannot start living for not yourself you can't start living a selfless life and have your sins be forgiven okay it's not just a matter of uh what you end up doing, okay? The end up doing is not the final product. It's a, it's a combination pack of sins forgiven and the new birth experience. The new birth experience of like becoming a new creature, okay? Um, there's a lot of people who just want their sins forgiven, but they never show evidence of passing from death into life, and then they, they fall into the category of um, falling into the fruits of those who haven't been converted. They're just the goats. And then they continue to live for self. In their heart, that's all they really think about. You know, and I was thinking about myself today, thinking like, how I don't even live. I'm, I'm not trying to sit there and brag. I'm just, I'm just using this as an example because that's, I don't, I don't know a ton of examples in, in this magnitude because I know me. You know, and I was thinking about like, um, how much money um, is cost, how far behind in, in the world's eyes I am now because of how much different, how things I do things differently. I don't live. <coughs> For myself anymore, you know. I live to take care of people, and I know I believe that um, taking care of people is a huge evidence of the new birth experience. And I know I have had a new birth experience, and I've gotten busy with um, challenging other theologies and other people um, in, in like um, compromised situations and stuff like this. And I've been speaking out again for a long time. And as the Lord has continued to teach me things and work with me, these things start to come. These, these evidences start to come of, yeah, there's a difference here. You don't, you, you're not, you really don't live the same as you used to live, okay? Like I said, coming to Jesus for uh, a quote-unquote forgiveness, like some people say, I come to Jesus and they don't ever change, is because they come to Jesus because all they want to do is forgive. They don't really want to give their life to Him. They don't want to commit their will to going from self to to pleasing Jesus, okay? Self-love is sin. That's all you got. That's all you can boil it down to. So in one sense, you can boil it down to self-love. Self-love or God-love and others' love. And when you do truly, truly convert your life over to Jesus and really, truly give your life to Jesus, your life is going to be a servanthood to Jesus. It's not come, you come to, you come to minister to, you came to serve. You didn't come to be served, Jesus did, and he came to serve, so to be a servant of all. He says, if you want to be great in my kingdom, be the servant of all. He told Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. you love me? Feed my sheep. you love me? Feed my lamb. And so there's a sense of the true, the true person who belongs to God is going to live and take care of people. That's what it's going to look like a lot of the time. And uh, it's a package deal. It's not only forgiveness of sin, 
there's a, a changed life, okay? And it seems like people get religious by taking either one of those two, but not both, okay? And, 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 I, and I'm saying that some people t try to take the forgiveness of sin, but it's not real because they don't want to truly commit themselves over to Jesus. But that's, it's, it's a combo deal. I really believe that. Those are some of the evidences he talks about. He's talking about people who are, <clears throat> you know, they they um, they say they believe, but with their works they they they, they prove that they don't believe. They, they 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 don't they don't have the evidences that they really do believe. So. Um, when were you naked and I didn't give you clothes? When did I see you in prison but not visit you? When were you sick and I didn't help you? When did I do those things? You know, it says, if you really were my child, those things would have been. You can't do those things to be forgiven. You come to Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of the grace of the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished works of the cross, and that's where your sins are forgiven and you've given your life truly to Jesus. Okay, it's a combo deal. That's just two things that just happened. You know, whether you realize it or not, it starts to come it starts to come into fruition in time if if the if the if the cross situation for you was real. If you really went to the cross, there's gonna be a change, okay? Not only are you you you'll know your sins are forgiven because you won't even want to live in sin anymore. You're gonna wanna live a to totally holy life because you don't wanna disrupt your, your union with Jesus. You don't wanna disrupt your relationship to Jesus. And uh, as we're learning as new believers, the I'm only like seven years and whatnot into this thing, and that's after living a very selfish life, thinking I was saved, you know, so I was believing in a false um, washing of my sins away, thinking I could live in this ant antinomianism through life, where you can just accept the faith, with my own faith, yes, I believe in Jesus, now I'm, I can live however I want, and I can still go to heaven, okay, I, I believe I was condemned as heresy, and um, completely uh, a dangerous teaching that um, has been pinned on a lot of great leaders in the history, which is not true. It's a, it's a heretical thing. I don't care where it came from, and I don't care who's being blamed for it. It doesn't matter. who. It, it, it matters that it's wrong. It matters that it's wrong. So we need to be careful who we're pinning things on and calling heretics when we, we, may, we might want to just watch our mouth on that, okay? Because we're going to be we're going to be given account for every idle word. We're going to give an account for every word that we say, even if we meant it for good. But as we grow, we're going to notice changes in our life. There's going to be evidences that we are changed. Not only will we hate sin because we've, we've been delivered from it. Um, yeah, we might wrestle with it once in a while. But overall, we're going to grow out of it. And we will um, have works to show. We will be showing with our works our salvation. Not salvation by works, but salvation that does get to work. Okay, because if you are saved, you are going to work. You're going to work differently than you used to work. You're going to work not for self, but for God. And in, in working for God, you're going to be taking care of um, obeying His laws and taking care of people. So, it's just really exciting. Sometimes I wake up and I and I take, it takes a while for me to get my juices flowing. It makes me, I feel like I'm not doing so good or I feel like this, I'm like, ugh. I need to go to the mountain and spend 10 hours with Jesus on the mountains and no, no distractions. <laughs> When the busyness of life comes along, all your responsibilities come in and consume you because it takes a long time. It takes a lot of energy and it's like you're just wiped out sometimes and you don't have enough time to, to get things done. But you're, you're getting things done, you're getting responsibilities done in order to have more time with Jesus so he can strengthen you up to take care of people more. Or whatever he wants, you know. Whatever the relationship between you and Jesus leads you to is what is what we need to be doing. Sometimes it's taking care of responsibilities. Sometimes it's taking care of people. Sometimes it's all those and then some. Okay. But ultimately, it's a relationship, and it should be re it should be birthing all kinds of great work. It should be birthing um, other us leading other people to Jesus, uh, influencing others into the kingdom. You know, and you'll notice that as you start to learn to serve God, people are going to take notice, and they're going to be excited about your passion, and they're going to they're going to want something to do with God now too because they're starting to see the reality in you. So, Amen. We're going to look at the we're going to look at two things. Okay. Um, we are forgiven and changed, okay? If you, if you don't see one of those, if you see only one of those, like an atheist can go out and do work, do nice things to people. In fact, they do a lot. <clears throat> but their sins aren't forgiven, so that's, that's the difference, okay? So we can remember that the new birth is not just sins forgiven. For people who want to accept that part, like, oh, I want him to be my Savior, but not my Lord, um, I believe that's heresy as well. 
so I guess people call me the Lordship Salvation. Um, and I think that I think the people who attack that are looking at that in a really bad light. Okay, um, talk to the people who actually believe it and actually are bearing the fruit, and find out what they really mean by it, and you'll find that um, you might agree with them far more than you than you than, than, than you think. Because Jesus Christ says, says, follow me. There's no way you're really going to deny yourself and follow him and have him not be Lord and like um, learning how to learning how to follow and learning how to deny yourself daily and take up a cross daily, daily and die daily. So, um, pretty extreme words that he says. So um, to say that there's no such thing as lordship salvation is is kind of uh, doesn't really make any sense. Plus, people who believe that, um, tell me what the Lord's been doing in your life. You know, I want you to know that right now. The main thing is that our lives should be changed. You know, and some of those people who believe in antinomianism. Um, I never hear of a real testimony that shows them of a wretch that they were. They've, they've been forgiven, and they know they've been pardoned, and they have a new life, and their life, the, the, the evidences of their life and the works of their life prove that they're salvation. 